Diamondbacks lefty, Robbie Ray. He's uh, 6'2", six, six 195 pound lefty. Just turned 25 in October. Finished 32nd in ground ball percentage uh, for 2016. But of those, with 25% or greater K rate, only Noah Syndergaard and Chris Archer were better. And they're both right. So Robbie Ray mm. literally was one of the best left-handed pitchers you could find in all of the major leagues last year. Uh, however, the Diamondbacks only won 69 games. He finished 40th in run support with 4.7 per game. So he had a lot of bad luck working against him. Uh, some of the things, actually probably the biggest thing to point towards uh, as far as his K rate or K numbers, which may seem like a uh, little bit of an outlier, was his 11.6 swinging strike rate, which tied him for 12th in all of baseball as well last year. So there's reason to believe that this is all legit and he's putting it together. Uh, I'm liking Ray a lot going forward. He's one of the young, intriguing power arms. Uh, as a lefty, he's going to get some time. I don't want to talk Ralph out of the building or out of the video, so let me turn <laughs> this over and see what Mr. Lifshitz has to say about Robbie Gray. But he's somebody I definitely am uh, fully on board with going forward. Yeah, and I, I am too. Um, definitely a fan of Ray. Um, as you mentioned, you know, I had the, the huge – jump in terms of swinging this stuff last year um you know it's throwing just as many balls in the zone hitters are making contact with just as many balls in the zone uh we're swinging it just as many balls in the zone what happened was they were missing the ball far more often when they were swing when when they were swinging as you mentioned the 11.6 percent um jump it was a, a 2.6 percent jump over the year before which he had about nine percent swing percent uh, swing strike rate so um there was the swing and miss stuff that made a huge difference there um, the big one, obviously, is the K per nine. That's where it showed up. Went from an 8.3 guy in 2015 to 11.2 in 2016. Um, the one thing that I do see that I don't love with Ray is his um, um, breaking pitch command. He doesn't necessarily always throw his secondary stuff in the zone. He actually had one of the worst strike percentages uh, amongst his uh, breaking pitches in the major leagues last year. If he's going to make that jump up, and it's one of the reasons that he kills you in ERA, if you look at his ERA, I think it was 4.67. Obviously, the outliers, the fifth, the x fifth says that he's really a sub-4 guy. Let's hope that he is. But I think the big difference there is him actually throwing more of those for strikes, which in turn will probably get pitchers to, you know, I mean, hitters to chase those balls out of the zone even more. So, you know, hopefully the swing and miss stuff is legit. And uh, if he's able to maintain that, you know, he could be sort of the, the Danny Duffy of uh, 2017. Yeah, we've commented off, you know, off air between you and I a lot uh, about how it's just disorganized and dysfunctional the Diamondbacks have been over the last couple of years. Hopefully they're getting things together and right, writing the ship, but they've given, basically given away top prospects for nothing. Uh, you know, they've not developed pitchers well. Uh, we all look at Goldschmidt as – you know, one of the greatest players in baseball and think that, hey, Arizona might not be that bad. Chase Field is known to be a good hitter's park, everything like that. But really, there's not much there outside of Goldschmidt. So with Robbie Ray, you've got a young, power, left-handed arm that, as I said, just turned 25 in October. So he's going to be 25 the entire 2017 season. And the upside is there. And again, I, I think a lot of it had to do with poor luck more so than all on Ray's shoulders. I think he's an emerging pitcher and uh, he's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but like you said with Danny Duffy, he's going to get close to, you know, he's going to get close to 200 innings if he doesn't surpass them this year. And he, the strikeouts are going to be there as well. So I'll live with a little bit of a high ERA rate. I will concede some of the wins based on, um, you know, a poor supporting cast in the desert. Uh, because if you're giving me a baseline of a soft pitcher that's going to put up, you know, good numbers that you want in fantasy with the added bonus that the wins could come, uh, it, it, that's, you know, pure upside for me. And I'm, mm. I'm totally, totally, totally digging that. Yeah, start with strikeouts, man, and just go with everything else after that. But strikeouts are most important. That's what I'm targeting most in drafts because the rest of the stuff a lot of the time is just luck and where the balls drop and all that sort of stuff. But this guy is a you know, 3.7, 3.8 ERA, and he puts up the K numbers he put up last year, then he's an honorable pitcher in all formats. 